In today's video, we'll be doing a full review of Harpo.ai. Harpo.ai is a new and powerful ChatGPT extension that allows you to do a variety of tasks. So in today's video, we'll be going over 10 unique use cases that you can do with Harpo AI. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we get into the use cases, let's talk a little bit about what exactly is Harpo AI. Harpo AI is a customizable Google Chrome chat GPT assistant and an AI powered no code RPA platform that saves time and money by automating tasks on the web. It provides AI answers to search queries, summaries to web pages, extracts structural data, tracks product prices and stock availability, monitors articles and legislations, detect changes in competitor sites and more. So it's a hybrid AI engine built on top of chat GPT, but it also has its own machine learning platform to help um, complete these web automation tasks. Once you install the Harpo Chrome extension, if you head over to the website, you'll be able to see some of its unique use cases. So you have specific use cases for marketing and SEO, copywriting, productivity, HR and recruiting, product development, and spreadsheets. You can also do specific things such as AI assisted search, you can um, have price monitors so you can get notifications when prices drop on specific products or websites. There's also an AI writer on any website that you're on so you're able to generate text for those specific websites. And there's also up to a hundred page aware commands for marketing, SEO, copywriting, HR, engineering, and so on. So essentially you can um, use the commands on specific pages to get you specific outcomes. And we'll be going over this a little bit later in today's video. And lastly, you have the ability to summarize YouTube videos so you can extract key takeaways from hours long YouTube videos with the help of generative AI. So as you can see, there's a lot of different use cases of Harpa AI, and really the sky is the limit when it comes to what you can do with this extension. So let's actually go ahead and go through some specific use cases and examples of Harpa. So once you've installed the Harpa extension, in order to access Harpa on any website, just hit the Control A button on Mac, and it should be Alt A on Windows. And as you can see, the Harpa interface will be available. And if you wanted to see the use cases, just hit the slash icon and you'll be able to see a bunch of different use cases that you have that will be specific for that page that you're on. So the cool thing about Harper is that it's able to understand the page that you're on. So you're able to get more customizable prompts and more customizable outputs compared to ChatGPT. As we know, ChatGPT does can't really read live pages on websites. So this is a huge Plus, and it kind of connects ChatGPT with live websites. So let's say, for example, we wanted to summarize the content on this article. I can just head over to the summary use case or the summary prompt, which summarizes page content. And as you can see here, um, Harper AI will be able to automatically read the content and it's giving us a nice summary of that content. So this would be very useful if you're reading a lot of content and you really need to summarize that content very quickly. And you don't want to copy and paste that content into ChatGPT. As we can see here, um, Harper doesn't just give you a very on the surface summary. It it's actually able to give you a very in-depth summary that you can read through and get the gist of what that article is about. So that's one of the use cases of Harpa. Another really cool prompt is the ask. So essentially this will ask you questions related to the open page. So again, Harpa will read that whole page. And if you have any questions, so for instance, this is um, article is about the best running shoes. So, so for example, you can ask it, what is the best running shoes according to this article? And it will tell you what that answer is according to the content on that article. So this article lists 35 running shoes that the authors are currently loving for road trail and race day, but it does not state which one is the overall best running shoes. It provides reviews and key specs for several classic running shoes for specific use cases. So again, we get a nice summary here. Instead of having to read through all of the content, we would be able to um, ask any question in relation to that article. So again, for example, I've asked it, what is the cheapest running shoe? And it gives us um, one of the cheapest running shoe in terms of the pricing from this article. So again, another very cool feature. And there's a bunch of different use cases in which you can use this for. Some other really effective page specific prompts are the ability to summarize this page in a tweet. So again, I can use that prompt, click enter. And as we can see here, it will create a nice and engaging tweet for us based upon the content of that page. So again, really, really cool um, that Harpa is able to read that full content and then create customized outputs for you. You can also extract content from web pages using Harpo. So for example, I can extract the data from this web page if I need to. I could extract the context, or sorry, the contacts. I could also extract research SEO keywords. So for example, if I wanna generate um, or extract the most relevant keywords for this specific page, I have the ability to do so as well. So let's actually go ahead and use the 
um, extract data to see if it's able to extract the key data from these running shoes. Okay, so just go ahead and click on that prompt, click enter. And as you can see here, we're getting some data for the specific running shoes. So we get the title of the article, the publication date, the number of running shoes revised, the types of running shoes, methods of testing, number of local runners used for testing, criteria for testing, top five running shoes, price of um, some of the specific running shoes and so on. So again, as we can see here, very, very useful if you're writing academic articles or if you need to extract data from a large web page. Again, Harpo makes it very easy for you to do so. As I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to extract and research SEO keywords, but you also have some other very, very unique and useful keyword and SEO prompts. So you can have a keyword report be done for specific keywords. It doesn't have to be related to that page. It can be any type of keyword in which you're doing research on. You can create a keyword strategy generator. So it provides a detailed strategy for any SEO keyword. You can segment your audience or break your audience into targetable groups with similar needs. You can create a monthly content calendar or a weekly content calendar. And you can also create SEO optimized articles. So for instance, let's say if we click on this specific um, article, it will then be able to create a SEO optimized article based upon that web page. So it will be able to read that information to figure out what exactly it's been um, included in that info in that website for it to rank on Google. And then it will create you a customizable article that you can use within your content. So again, this would be very useful if you don't really have time or you don't really want to use ChatGPT to create your article for you, you can do it all within Harpo. And if you wanted to use any of the keyword specific prompts, again, just click on that prompt. And then now we need to enter our keyword. And as we can see here, we are getting, um, some titles in which we can use. We are getting some meta descriptions, some search intent, and some uh, variations of that keyword that we can write about within our articles. You also have the ability to generate long and short form content using Harpo. So you can generate short form text such as tweets, emails, captions, and things of that sort. But you can also generate long form articles like um, the blog post in which we just did, which was the SEO optimized article. So you have a variety of different um, text generation methods in which you can use just depending on the type of content in which you're creating. So let's say we wanted to create an Instagram post caption generator. We would then need to select that specific prompt and then we need to answer the input, which is what your Instagram post is about, the topic idea and some information. So let's say we wanted to create a Instagram caption about going on vacation in two days. As you can see here, we got about three different variations of captions in which we can use. And we have um, a variety of different hashtags that go along with that caption. You can also generate article outlines. You can generate sections for specific articles. You can create a blog post from a topic. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay, so this was the content in which we were able to get back. It was able to create our outline for us and it made a description and it started writing, but I think it, um, it just didn't have enough tokens. So let's actually go ahead and click continue and it should be able to continue writing what it did not finish. Okay. So this was the blog post in which we were able to get back. I just want to see quickly how much words um, this was. I don't think it was very long by any means. So about 610 words, which is not bad. Um, but of course you'd like to be able to journey something a little bit longer. So I don't think it would be really great for long form content creation. That is much better when you're using ChatGPT or the playground mode. But again, it's nice that you have the ability to create content that easily using Harpo. In addition to text generation, you also have some specific learning prompts. So you can find resources on a topic. You can generate a course. You can create a unit study and a strategy for learning on a given topic. You can plan lessons. You can have access to your own university professor that will answer any questions on any topics in which you have. You can create quiz studies. Um, beyond that, you have some job interview um, prompts in which you can use for recruiting. So you have some questions, a resume cover letter prompt, which helps you to create a tailored cover letter for any job based on your CV, um, some resume suggestions, re resume improvers, job announcements, and so on. And under generative AI, you have an AI content detector. So this will actually um, be able to test your content for AI written content. And below that, you have an AI content humanizer, which will rewrite your given AI text into a more human version to pass an AI detection um, tool. So let's actually go ahead and give this a try. First, let's go ahead and scan some content which we created using an AI copywriter. And let's see what percentage of that content is being detected as an AI. Okay, so it's 100% AI detected as AI written. So let's now go ahead and use the Harpo AI extension. Okay, so we've pasted that into Harpo and it's rewriting that content. And then we'll do a new test to see how this um, compares 
to the original content. Okay, so we've pasted in new content and we're scanning again. And it's still a 100% AI. So I don't think the content rewriter will be that well because it's probably trained on the older um, versions of originality.ai. So um, I didn't really expect it to be that good. But again, it's nice that they have um, these different use cases and these different prompts included within their tool. You also have a mid journey prompt generator, stable diffusion prompt generator, Google Sheets expert. So you can get help with Google Sheets, generate macros, write formulas and browse shortcuts, etc. And below that, you have a Python Pro. You can ask any questions about Python. You can write, inspect and debug code. You have a JavaScript Pro, Java Pro. Again, you can ask any questions about Java, write, inspect and debug code, PHP Pro, HTML, CSS Pro, MySQL Pro. Docker Pro and so on. So you have some very specific coding prompts or coding AI chat boxes that you can use to help you debug and write code. And below that, we have some assistant specific prompts such as a trip planner and a checklist helper. And lastly, we have a text adventure game simulation where you can play a choose your own adventure game in a story or setting that you like. So as you can see here, we have a variety of different use cases um, for Harpo AI. You have some fun use cases, but most importantly, you have some very effective use cases that allow you to generate text, but also allows you to analyze text uh, very easy. And one more um, template in which I forgot to use was the YouTube summary. So you can actually open up a YouTube video, then you can pop up the YouTube video summary template, and it will be able to process that video and then give you some um, inputs or give you a summary of that specific video. So instead of watching that full video again, you can get a a nice summary from that video just by using the YouTube video summary template. So pretty cool um, tool. I don't really think that there's another tool that allows you to do something like this. You can copy the transcript and paste that into ChatGPT, which is what exactly I think they're doing. But again, this allows you to do it much easier compared to previous models. So that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed um, today's video. I hope that you will find some useful use cases of Harpo that you can use within your business to help you our automate tasks and do things a little bit faster. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.